anyway, uh, I don't know how you get from astrophysics to where you are now, but I'm hoping you'll tell us. Telescopes to microscopes is the answer. So hopefully that makes sense to many of you. Anyway, Dr. Lechleiter is a professor in the Department of Cell Systems and Anatomy. He's been here for a number of years and has contributed, in my opinion, a lot to the environment for training. Those of you who've had the opportunity to interact with him directly as a student are through the course called, what's that microscope course called? Oh, practical Optical Microscopy. Practical Optical Microscopy. It's a very good course for any of you who are thinking about using microscopic approaches to your research program and also just if you want to know about it. But as I started this discussion, I said, Dr. Lechleiter has conflicts. And I was also thinking and reflecting with him that if we were doing a discussion of conflicts, we could all engage in this conversation. But instead, we're going to focus on a very distinct and important conflict, and that is conflict of interest. And this is, this is real in all aspects of our lives, but in particular, if you are a member or a part of our university and you decide that you want to have a company or a relationship with a company and their financial and other implications, automatically you're a target for our institutional oversight to make sure that your conflicts don't interfere with your day job, which is, in this case, being a professor of cell systems and anatomy. So Dr. Lechleiter is going to give us some insights on how he got where he is and the conflicts and how he manages them, because it's really a management issue. So, so I'm okay. So I'm going to start at the beginning. All right. So, so um, and so then we'll eventually at the last half of the talk. There's a lot of text here, and I want to try to avoid reading off the slides. Right. You know, here we have a you know a whole teaching and training grant, and it's like I've got all these. I'm supposed to have action and live moments, and I don't have many of those in these. Okay. So, um, so, so this is sort of what I want to try to do when we get through it. Right. Just what is a conflict of interest? So, what are the ideas behind it? What are the concepts behind it? And then what I was just talking about, how do you disclose them? Okay, so you may discover after I finish this talk today that you do have conflicts and you want to do something about it and not be trouble, you know, or not you know, sleep better, all right, you know? And so what do you do? Where do you go to actually take care of that? And then I'm going to get into actually something, if it is a real problem, where it's not just disclosing, but you really do have a serious conflict where there could be some ethical issues and you could end up in the front page of the, you know, local newspaper or, you know, Washington Times, who knows? What do you do to make sure that that doesn't become a problem? And, and I guess on the onset, conflicts aren't bad, okay? They're actually quite good. The university would love for you to have lots of context, conflicts simply because, you know, you can actually have, you know, businesses that you start, you know, potential intellectual property. Those are all good things. We're not trying to discourage it. In the end, we're just trying to find a way to manage it, okay? You know, just the way to sort of be transparent, be ethical about the whole thing, all right? So, all right, so what is a conflict, all right? A uh, conflict of interest in particular, and maybe, you're, maybe it's intuitively obvious, but, but not so much to me, but I mean, as we're talking about it, it's like, it, it's something that doesn't even have to affect your judgment outside, it can just appear to affect your judgment. I think that's kind of an important thing to add to, right? You know, so if it just looks like it looks bad, you know, um, that you are being completely above board, but it looks like there could be a problem here, you really need to sort of stay on top of that. So you can sort of document the fact that you have got a management plan and you are being transparent and you've got actually some way to sort of resolve this and sort of keep a lid on it if you'd like, okay? So, so one of the most interesting or I guess easiest ways to look at it is if you're talking about research, that's where my conflict comes in, where we started the company um, based on some research did in the lab and so now once you have that company, the company's goal eventually to bring it to market, right? But, but basically, they can't bring it to market unless they get good data, right? You know, so you've, I'm sure you've all heard about these sort of, you know, clinical trials that have sort of been pushed the data just a little bit more just to get the assets up in the company, something of that sort. That's where you've got to be really careful, okay? So anything like that that could have some sort of benefit that's really going to start influencing not just in the way you report it, the way you conduct the experiment, even the way you design the experiments could be problematic. There are things that are both, you know, non-research conflicts 
And there's now, because of me, it's not just my problem. I've got an individual conflict of interest. Uh, and actually, the institution has a conflict, too, because they actually have licensed the technology now to a company, and so they can actually, you know, gain from this, all right? So, so it's not just the individual. It's the institution, too. And it's all good, all right? All right, so, so um, as I said before, the, 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 when you can get these sort of conflicts, you know, is, is clearly there's some sort of contract between the Health Science Center here, UT Health, and a company, and that's my company in particular, right? So, so we got this invention uh, out of some research that came out of the lab. We filed for some intellectual property protection. The university owns this, all right, but I'm, you're the inventor, okay? And so what they have done then, they will license this particular technology to a particular company, so they have exclusive rights to develop the technology. All right, so to do that, then they actually get a certain percentage of all the actual royalties. So it turns out that, that I've get like, the inventors get 40%, and then there's like a, the other 60% is broken down to like the dean, the VPR, the other people at the administration. Okay, yeah, so, so, so the, the resources are actually spent around, and, and that's okay. I mean, it's like, you'd like to think, well, I'd like 100%, but the reality is you don't bring, you know, uh, IP, you know, um, property. Essentially, you don't, it's very costly to develop that and actually to get a patent yourself. So the university covers all that for you, all right? So it's actually very nice to have them develop it, you know. But in return for that, then they're trying to actually make money out of this. Potentially, that's what the Office of Technology and Commercialization is doing. And so what they will do then is license it. And so that puts the university front and center. And so actually, our company has gotten even a little bit further than that now, where now we're getting private investment. It's, it's an early round of investment, but essentially now there's actually a UT system uh, investment firm called UT Horizon, um, and they've actually put money into the company now too. And again, it's just, these are just investors, they're high risk sort of options to actually um, uh, do this, and eventually it might pay out really big, or it might just disappear, which is, you know, nine times out of 10. And so so that's, that's the risk of these sort of things, okay? So anyway, there's, there's conflicts here, and we wanna make sure there isn't a problem. And you know, you can have stock, um, um, and, and I think those are, a lot of times I don't think we have to worry about stock options. I think, you know, most of this stuff, you know, I don't know what stock options I have. I've got some little money manager or something like that. So it's really not, I'm not worried that, you know, I'm going to buy Apple computers because you know, I've got Apple stock. I have no idea what stock I have, you know, so. So those are just things that you have to worry about, I guess. All right. Just out of definition, to be complete, it doesn't have to be a conflict of interest, too. Uh, some of the things that happen, so, so one thing I should have said, too, there's actually a committee that sort of handles all these things. They say, well, you're unsure whether or not you've got a conflict that needs to be managed or not. And, and so there's a committee called the Conflict of Interest Committee, I think, right? That's all it is. Um, um, and so they actually, uh, Melanie actually will get a number of faculty come in to, to take part in this. All right, and so I'm actually on this committee too. And we'll get all kinds of interesting sort of um, questions that come up and management plans. Um, and so, so in addition to just regular company issues, there can be an issue that, well, Let's say you're serving on a board and you're actually sp uh, splitting your time between your, your responsibilities here as a professor or a faculty member or a student or not, where, where essentially you are doing something and your, your time is, un is divided, okay? And so they've got set rules where essentially if it interferes with what you're supposed to be doing here, you can do all these things. You can serve actually as, as a um, um, scientific advisor or board member, something like that, but you have to still fulfill your du duties here, all right? If you give above this 30% level, and I actually don't know, you know how that was set, but it, but it is set, right? So you know, generally speaking, most scientists don't do this out of the goodness of their heart. Maybe some do, I shouldn't say that so you know, callously. I mean, essentially what they do is they'll get paid for being on, on a board. You know, there are, there are faculty, there are many scientific boards that actually we deal with in that, in that committee, and so we just have to sort of report them, what's the income from it, and generally speaking, it never gets above this level, but it potentially could, I suppose, you know, so just things to pay attention to, some rules, and, and I guess, yeah, resources outside, okay. So anyway, there is, it's a little bit different, a little bit subtle, and I'm gonna talk about conflicts of interest. That's actually what I deal with. All right, so, and this is sort of the, the, the classic, you know, why do we worry about this, and again, it's, to try and keep your, your name and photograph off the Express News in, in a bad way, all right? You know, it's great if you've invented something, but if, you, you know, if you're doing something that actually looks bad, you know, and generally speaking, it's money that drives this sort of thing, and that's what we're trying to pay attention to here, right? So it looks like you've got conflicts, and it always seems to come down to money. Whether or not you're trying to sort of favor particular results, it sort of grows, you know, um, uh, the stock options, it makes the company more valuable, so my equity looks better. 
Um, or if you're just trying to impress your chair, you know, you're trying to get more equipment, you know, more lab space. Say, I've got this great drug, I could really develop it if you just give me a little bit more space to do this, you know. Um, so it's being a little bit, you know, in disingenuous, I guess, you know. So, so and, and ethics is sort of the main thing. I mean, I think some of the things, if you think them through, you really can, you can get to the point where just ethical considerations, just be transparent, you know, you can figure this out. And if you have questions, you go talk to Melanie, okay? So, all right. So, conflicts can actually happen in a lot of different ways. Um, so, research and teaching is probably my primary ones where I think about it. I mean, research is easier for me to think about. The technology commercialization, obviously, I said if you've got technology, you have to be a little bit careful there. If you're a clinic, you know, where you actually are trying to favor a particular drug, you know, it's not something that directly impacts me, but it's something you should be concerned about where, you know, doctors, we were just talking about with Melanie early on before we started here, doctors get all kinds of free gifts from pharmaceutical companies and say, here, hand out my drugs. Yeah. Okay, so, so, so yeah, just think about it. And obviously, you know, purchasing too. I think that, you know, we always think it, it, it really only concerns um, um, uh, faculty or students, but, or scientists, but it can also, if somebody is in the purchasing department, and so it gets in a way that I've got a little bit of stock in, I know, some microscope company, and so let's favor Nikon versus, like, so there's lots of ways you can imagine this could happen, you know, um, so just be aware of it a little bit, okay? So, so maybe the obvious, but this is what we were just talking about, when you have these sort of conflicts, these are the things that people worry about. There can be bias in the design, you know, obviously you don't necessarily think you think about your conflict, you don't think about your, your duties that you're being paid for, um, things like the purchasing decisions, uh, misuse of resources, and, and, and you know, if you're MD, uh, compromise in patient care, things of that sort. So really these are things that you want to be a little bit careful about and just to make sure you're above board and aren't worrying about this. So as we go forward here to try and manage this, you know, it came down to these very simple things that you're just open about it, you're transparent, um, that, that really it's just about ethics, you know, you're just trying to maintain um, um, an ethical standards that, that actually is high. Um, and that there, uh, what I mentioned earlier on is that it's not always a bad thing. It isn't generally a bad thing to have a conflict. It just has to be recognized, acknowledged. Um, in some cases, you do have to sort of reduce it, main it min minimize it, you know, or manage it, okay? And so, so um, the committee, if it gets to be bad, will say, well, this is not acceptable. We have to do something different. Um, and, and there are ways in which that's actually suggested to do it. You can see how it worked out for me too. I think at one point I was on the director, board of directors for our company, which sounds great. I didn't do much of anything, but, but it sounds good. But it's, it's a conflict because we're getting money from the company, right? So I, you know, I'm no longer on a voting member of the board. So things like that need to be resolved. And that was actually brought up by the actual committee on, on um, conflict committee. All right. So who discloses? Here it is, um, everybody, essentially. That's, I mean, you know, generally speaking, we talk about faculty here because, you know, there's lots of money involved, you know, postdocs, you guys are getting money, you know, but, you know, so you potentially the conflict is there if you have investments in, in but generally speaking, it's all faculty uh, primarily. I mean, I don't know, we have a lot of postdocs, but you still have to declare things if you're giving talks, so. So it's all faculty. All right. So, um, okay, so, so, so. You know, these are kind of things that you might disclose, all right? That, you know, it's not, it's not a complete list, but things that actually, you know, that I've talked about with Melanie, um, and, and that if you get anything from outside your institutional salary, right, you know, or from your grant, that's actually something you have to worry about. There are some dollar limits here, but you just want to disclose them. I didn't know about the USB device. That's actually very interesting, you know, so. Uh, outside employment, you know, equity is something that maybe is more obvious if you own part of a company, all right? You know, that actually could make a difference. Um, anything that's uncompensated, Intellectual property, clearly you have to pay attention to that because that has value, hopefully, you know, um, and royalties if you get any. Um, and then gifts, you know, from people. And this is, like you said, whether it's a dinner, a um, um, bunch of dinners or just a, a ticket to go watch the game or something like that. Those are all things you have to pay attention to a little bit. Uh, board memberships, like I said, that came up with me because of our company um, and that, you know, I was having a conflict because I was both deciding, potentially voting on the way money would be spent with the company, and since we were getting a grant through the company, a question I had to get off of that. Uh, what about compensation for giving talks? So, so that actually is something you report, and I was going to actually, it's a good segue here, right? You know, so, so, so uh, it's not one of those things that you need a management plan for, you just have to pay attention to it and report it, okay? So I was going to try and go through, like if I gave a talk, a conference over in, I don't know, um, Germany, you know, um, and so, so I just reported to the university, and I got an honorarium, and they paid for my, my trip over there, right? So it wasn't, 
It wasn't paid for off of local you know, grant funding. You know, it was actually paid by somebody else. So you have to put down just how much money did you get, how was it spent, so just keep track of it. So how do you do this? So this, this is what I was talking about earlier. You know, if you've got these you know, um, potential of conflicts, but you've actually got honorariums, or you've traveled someplace and somebody's reimbursed you for the travel or paid for your travel, how do you tell people about it? And if you aren't sure, you email Melanie, and I'll give you her email contact soon. Uh, but th th she's got uh, designed this very nice program called I Disclose, that once you're on this list, you have to go to every year and report uh, what you've done this past year. And so actually, I did bring it up, and what I realized is that I, I haven't done my 2017, so it's kind of <laughs> green. <laughs> so I need to go in and actually fix this, you know. But, but essentially, the website is here, down below, the VPR's office uh, website, and then it's I Disclose. And once you go in, obviously these are all active links down here. Uh, so annual reporting for 2016, it would be 2017 now. Um, and whether or not, you know, these things, you just want to uh, make sure. So, so if you click on this, you'll actually find out um, it's an intelligent enough program. So if you've done it the year before, it'll actually repopulate the same things in. You can say, yeah, I did NIH again. I did American Heart because I got $100 for reviewing some grants, right? Or I gave a talk and... Essentially, it's the same thing, but I gave it in a different institution so we can go and edit it and actually, get, you know, so it's actually pretty, pretty user friendly. You know, I'm getting used to it, but I only do it once a year, so I have to always, you know, ask questions. <laughs> yeah. So these are some of the things that actually, that, that, I, that I got from legal and some of the slides that they gave me, you know, just, you know, the, the dollar amounts here, intellectual property, which is maybe, you know, uh, more obvious than others. The travel expenses, I already mentioned this, you know, if it's outside of somebody's giving that to you to sort of present and sort of influence you somehow. Um, time spent on an activity, you know, this is again, it's something I presume it's sort of that, you know, if you've got an independent, you know, life, you know, that sort of, um, I, I think this is sort of the outside activity that has some sort of impact, I guess, you know, with your job here, you know. It gets to be much more interesting once you try and when I've got, so I'm still trying to straighten out all this for the company because um, we, essentially when, when I get money from the company, it's not, they don't write me out a check. What happens, it goes through sponsored research, so it's like a, a private grant, all right? So it's like from American Heart, it's just, it's just a grant number that we get. But technically, if it's not the university, I'm not supposed to use, you know, university resources, you know, and it's supposed to be any kind of company work is like separated off. So there's some, there's some issues that they try and make sure it's a very big wall, that, 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 this, that the university is not trying to sort of, you know, favor a particular company here, okay? So, all right. So, non-significant reporting, you know, um, and, and so I was a little bit confused here a little bit, but again, this has to do with things that are sort of outside your work description, I think is sort of the, the basic line, that, that it's fine if you've got, if your grandmother or your grandfather gave you some stock options in AT&T, it doesn't actually affect your, your, um, your decision making unless you have at t they don't make computers anymore, right, you know, so, <laughs> so, so I mean, I, I think that that's all fine. Um, um, the, Lectures and you know we, you know I guess it's exempt from but we actually so it's a little bit confused but this is outside so I, I actually and this is like if you're going to give a talk someplace say um, on evolution it has nothing to do with your research or something here and you just out of the goodness here you're trying to actually just sort of you know educate I think that's not something but I always give when I give a lecture you know on any research outside the institution I always do report it okay and just whatever honorarium I get something like that okay. Uh, this disclosure, but you do it once a year, um, um, or when you first uh, arrive, and, and uh, if it's a significant interest. The other thing that I have to do, because I'm part of the company, I have to have this disclaimer in my research talks, too. I have to say, you know, if you remember my first slide, it said I'm uh, a professor here at the Health Science Center, or UT Health, and then I'm also like a, a, um, um, an owner, or, you know, of the um, company, right? And then you have to this disclosure say that I actually do own equity in that company. So that's the slide that has to be like my second or third one of every talk. And it's just out of habit now, okay, to say that I'm not trying to sell you anything, but that potentially, you know, you should be aware that I'm going to try and make the best out of this. And I've could, I could gain if you guys really liked you know, the data or something like that. So that's just something you have to do if you actually own a company, you know, especially if you're showing your research here, okay? All right, so you fill out your I disclose form or your, or your websites, answer all the questions, and uh, Melanie calls you up or emails and says, you got a problem, okay? So, <laughs> and so, so how are you going to manage it? And so they've actually worked this out quite nicely now as far as, you know, an entire process and there's sort of, you know, templates now to work through this. And so I was going to kind of work through what they're trying to do. You know, define it. You know, you know, whether or not there's a true conflict. This is that committee of interest, you know, committee, and then what do you do, okay? Um, 
And so I'm going to go through just some general things here. What, what you do, you call Melanie is what you do. Okay, you know, so <laughs> and I've got that. You can actually get her, all right? So, um, and then um, uh, the kind of things that you do, it's sort of, these are the things that will come up in your management plan. You know, all the things that could be problematic, you know, what are you going to do about it? So first you identify the bias in design, whether it's any kind of, you know, in, um, uh, reporting problems in publications. How do you protect students? Because that's a bit of an issue too, that you're trying to use students sort of in this and sort of, you know, as benefiting the company and not their educational. Um, so those are all things that have to be considered in your actually management plan, okay? Or things that are considered in the management plan, all right? So um, the other thing is, is, you know, this idea between potential and actual conflict. I mean, I think that's where this sort of, to me, it's, it's that perception that can be as problematic as that, in an actual conflict too, okay? So that's why it's just transparency, what you're trying to do. Like, like Teresa said, when in doubt, just report it. It's no big deal, you know, so. And, th and then you guys will decide whether or not it's a problem needs management or not, okay? Um, and then, then this is something that once you get this management plan going, it's actually reviewed each year. And if any sort of updates in say, the ownership or the values of the company or something like that takes place, then you have to update that and to see whether or not any sort of adjustments need to be made to the management plan. Okay, so there is this possibility that they will come back and say, this is unacceptable, we just can't handle this, okay? And adjustments are made. It's not that often, but I know we've had, like in the committee itself that I've served on, we've had several attempts by, by uh, faculty that keep coming back and saying, this is what I want to do. And we'd say, no, you can't do that. And, so, <laughs> and they go away and they come back and it says, no, you still can't do that. You know, so, so, so it goes back and forth for a while. So I think, you know, you try and find that place where it actually is um, uh, transparent um, and there's a reasonable way where this, this actual conflict doesn't exist and it's sort of managed, you know. So you might have to put something in a third party, uh, which is, you know, uh, for data review or something of a grant. Um, are published papers in which actually will, can dramatically affect, say, the um, uh, value of, say, you know, our particular you know, product is actually a drug, right? So we want to show that this drug actually works really well. And so we have to actually have somebody um, actually look at this that sort of independently, you know, a third party review the data. And so I'm not just going to say, well, this looks really great. It may not have an asterisk there, but it's really trendy, you know. So it's like, you know, I mean, those, I mean do you want somebody to sort of objectively look at these data? All right, so uh, this is a slide, so maybe this is not, but I just thought it was kind of cute. I needed some sort of, you know, slide to actually break up the text here, you know. But basically, there are things that you do that, you know, who cares, you know. It's not a conflict management problem, so don't worry about it. You know, anything that's personal, anything that's outside your work, um, um, uh, manage, you know, as long as you get your job done, all your responsibilities are met, okay. Even if you're politically talking about science? Well, ask Jonathan. <laughs> I think. Just, so long as you're not representing the whole science center yet. Yeah. Actually, that is an interesting point about representing, because I mean, a lot of times, I would say in my former youth, you know, that, that I wanted to make an impact on somebody when I was writing, and so I used, you know, letterhead from the university. That's a no-no, okay? You know, you know, you know, yeah, that's a bad thing to do, okay? You know, so that's one really clear example where you're trying to say, well, I've actually got some weight here. It says, well, it's totally inappropriate, wrong, don't do it, okay? You know, so. so if it's personal, you know, make up your own letterhead, basically. So just in the last, you know, how long is this, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes, you know, whenever people, yeah. yeah. So, so I wanted to talk about sort of my specific um, uh, conflict and then just look at the management plan. And it's a little bit of text, but it kind of shows you what you have to go through to sort of manage it. And it's actually quite reasonable, but it's like, you know, maybe it's intuitively obvious, but, but um, it's just what, what, did, what did I do, all right? So clearly, um, you know, it was flagged as that I had a conflict because, like I said, we, we, we um, uh, formed a company about three and a half years ago, okay? And so we've got equity in it, you know? And so the research that we're doing here, it was actually NIH funding that actually um, uh, we developed this patent. And so then we used that, and NIH is fine. They'll give the actual license rights to, um, uh, or the um, patent rights to all the um, uh, individual uh, researchers. And so, so once you have that, you've actually got value. One, it's, an, it's a, a patent. Then if you get a company that gets interested in this, or you, or you develop it yourself and, and you start the company, then you have to be careful that you're not trying to favor, meld your research and your results to favor the company's value, okay? Or to get reimbursed somehow like that, right? So, so clearly, it, you know, it's got um, issues with the product and how it can bring it to market, okay? So, so this is fine print, not so you read it, but you can kind of see the different categories in which you go through, okay? So don't try and read this, okay? That, I wasn't quite sure exactly how to present this. Um, but, but basically, 
what you try to do is that, okay, now that I have conflicted research, you're trying to find what is the research you're doing. So you actually kind of have a good uh, framework. And basically we have got safeguards uh, around the particular sort of um, um, uh, compound. It doesn't mean I can't do research on this particular drug that we're doing. And actually we're trying to always find a little bit better drug for it, but I have to actually uh, declare it. And I have to say, well, how am I actually, once I get results with this data, I'm gonna say, well, I'm doing double-blinded experiments, which you should do as a good scientist anyway. Um, you're also, you know, once you get the data, you're supposed to hand it to somebody else. And actually the VPR's office um, will actually pay attention too. Now, now, it's interesting, you can actually go directly to astrocytes. So there's a bit of a sort of a, you know, it's a little hard to do some of these things because I'm actually sort of part of the company. So there are some, I don't want to call them gray zones, you know, when, but, but um, usually, yeah, and, but, but, but the, the community really tries to work with you to try and make it as, you know, it's certainly, um, it's quite common to have um, um, scientists actually get something interesting and for the university wants you to actually develop this. This is something that actually has a value to the university. So it's not a bad thing. We're just trying to do it all above board so that actually is still, it's done in an ethical fashion, right? You know, so that actually if it is a good product, you know, if it actually does cure cancer or something, then, you know, you want this to go ahead and, and make the data as sound as you can, all right? So, so basically, um, you know, I can't apply directly to actually astrocyte for grant funding, but there is actually ways to bring it through the actual um, uh, office of sponsored project. So I still can get money through it just through the regular granting processes. Got to go through all the same steps. There's got to be animal protocols, all the same ethical standards that are at the university. All that stuff has to take place. Um, the biggest thing comes by, I think, is mostly you know, how the, the um, 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 uh, there are some approvals that I need. That, oh, wait, no, I actually lost it. It's too small for me to actually read it now. You know, so so. Um, the one thing you do, it, it doesn't actually pay, you know, affect your performance here, is what I was talking about. But basically, if there's if there is a conflict, like I said, this one thing where there's something that is both astrocyte in, in, in the health science center here, um, astrocyte's the name of the company uh, that actually then you do go to some sort of console and make sure it's resolved. That we're being a little bit careful about. So I usually. That's what I always do. I always go talk to Melanie first to see if this is the problem, okay? Or she'll tell me it is a problem and actually do something about it, you know? So, so, so um, you know, you can manage it. So basically once you plan the studies and that you're trying to be careful that you're sort of having somebody else um, um, pay attention. Like, like I said, one of the main things that we did, the biggest adjustments that I could not vote as the board of directors in the company, right? I had to step aside. I can be a scientific advisor, but I don't have voting power, you know, and if it's, you know, directly with that. So that's sort of maybe an obvious sort of adjustment that takes place. Um, you know, this commitment, I can only spend so much time with it. I can't spend more than that 30%. As long as I get my time done, I mean, my work done, it's really not a problem. You know, I mean, hours, you know, it's like it's not a 40 hour work week anyway, but you can still uh, get all your responsibilities done. And, and they really, too, I don't consider them in conflict. I mean, I really do think that one, we are developing translational um, products that actually are beneficial, you know, so it's a good thing. You want to do these sorts of things, all right? Um, so the research integrity bit, um, you do want to, you know, uh, this is where you have to talk about if, you know, uh, somebody else is actually um, um, looking at your data. I, I can't see where I have this actually on all this text here, where we actually have some third party pay attention and look at our data, but we do do that. And it's something sort of natural that's done. Um, I am supposed to report to the vice president every year and talk about the management plan. And that actually essentially goes through Melanie here too. So we sort of review that every year to make sure everything's sort of on track. She works for the vice president's office. Um, and that if anything new conflicts develop, like I said, we just had a new um, patent that came out this past year. So that's a new conflict, you know, that actually we actually sort of are, uh, keep track of, you know? So those are all good things that increase the value, all right? Um, all right, so I don't think that's any big deal. All right, so I think, I don't want to go through too much of this here, all right? So, yeah, yeah. So this, the last little thing here, and, and I've already sort of mentioned this, it's not just me or not just you, it's the institution too, and that's, that's managed also, right? You know, where I think there's, you have to be a little bit careful, and it is kind of an interesting concept, but once the university owns part of it, or at least can benefit, uh, they, they own the, the actual intellectual property, uh, and they license it, and they, they'll get royalties out of this, that means they've actually got investments in this entire process too. So that actually is how do they manage it and things, and there's an entire, very similar, sort of management plan. Yeah. And I think there was one, there's one faculty actually on the committee that came through, and one of the issues comes up with the protocols, that, you know, the, the IACUC protocols, okay, and it turns out that they can't be the PIs in the protocols. There was some interesting sort of, you know, workarounds where they had to be a little bit careful where they, um, and so, so again, these are things that I would not have known to worry about beforehand, 
but they're flagged by somebody who's supposed to pay attention to it, and then we just find ways to manage it, okay? So I think, given the, the hour, I'm just going to let it go there if there's more questions, because there really isn't any more that I have to sort of, you know, any more insights. It's, it's been, um, it hasn't been that burdensome, burdensome you know. I, I think it's quite relatively easy to actually um, go through this. And like I said, the university really encourages this. They love lots of conflicts, you know. They, they would love you to manage more things, more, more um, uh, business interests, you know. I think it's to everybody's benefit to do this and just to be transparent about it, you know. So. Okay, thank you for your attention and may you have many conflicts and resolve them all. Yes. Yes. So, 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 right. Sure. Yep.